Curtis ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sergeant John Paddock. That's right. If I could. Yes. Your wish to address the court. Can I request that the other witnesses be sequestered during this testimony? Well, sir, uh, if you want me to recognize your need to stand, okay? This is part of the way to be. This is an issue of making sure that everybody knows what's happening. It's like a town meeting. The person who stands has the floor. If you're interrupting his performance, I, I honestly didn't hear you. You need two signals. That's the way this has been set up. So, I now have a motion for sequestration. I have no objection, Your Honor. All right, all right. Do you have any witnesses, Mr. Nope, I think Mr. Baxter right, speaking for themselves. Then, um, <coughs> there were no victims? No, sir. Uh, then all of the witnesses need to please go outside and not discuss their testimony with any other witness until this matter is concluded. Right. Mr. Yuri, I'm not asking you to stand except when you're questioning, because you have the floor, or when you're making an objection, because you're trying to get the um, attention of three people. All right, the court is paying attention to what's happening. This gentleman is asking his questions, and whatever person is in the witness room, where you have to get the attention of three separate people. The system that has been worked out to allow for that says an audible signal by saying objection, and then a visual signal by standing up. That's all. All right, let's proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. So please raise your hand. You saw me swear or affirm the testimony you're about to place this matter as the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. From the page, tell me it's perjury. Please be seated. Please state your name and spell your last name for the record. My name is John Petty. My name is spelled P A T T I. Mr. Petty, how are you employed? The city of Manchester, as a police officer. How long have you been so employed? I've been a police officer for 19 years, with Manchester for 16 years. Were you on duty on June 4th of this year? Yes. In the early evening hours of June 4th, you tell the court what was going on outside the Manchester Police Department. Sure. Um, Outside in front of the uh, police station on Chestnut Street, there were a group of approximately 20 to 30 people who were uh, protesting uh, their views on matters related to the police department. Um, some of the protesting involved uh, writing with chalk on the sidewalk, some involved writing with chalk on the building of the police department, and other uh, parts of the protest included people on the sidewalk with signs. At some point, did you uh, exit the Manchester Police Department to take photographs of these writings? Yes, I did. Did you tell the court what happened when you exited the Police Department? Um, at this point, Your Honor, um, a number of things had, had occurred. Uh, the writing had already occurred. Um, we, I had asked a couple of detectives to take photographs of the writing that had been placed on the building on the sidewalk. What did you do that, sir? Sorry? Why did you do that? Um, so we could memorialize um, the evidence, keep it as it was. What happened next, sir? Um, while I was standing there, there was a group of, I would say, between 10 and 20 people standing on the sidewalk directly in front of the police station. Uh, I saw a subject known to me as uh, Jason Holdsworth uh, walking on the sidewalk. He came uh, down Merrimack Street towards Chestnut Street took a right on Chestnut Street diagonally and encountered the group standing on the sidewalk on the police station. He stopped and crossed the street um, to avoid them. Objection. Objection. You're saying he doesn't, I don't know how uh, the witness can infer from someone's conduct the rationale for that actions. The evidence is an offer. It's certainly not hearsay. He's testifying as to what he saw, what he witnessed. Right, but he doesn't know the motivations for his actions. I believe there was testimony to the motivations for his actions. I believe the witness said uh, to avoid the group out there on the sidewalk. And as to that component, any reason? No, sir. I can be striking. Stri I will strike that anger, sir. You said, uh, 
What about the next sergeant? Uh, the uh, detectives uh, began photographing the scene, and um, throughout the um, afternoon, while these subjects were protesting, um, it was explained to them by me and other police officers there that um, it was fine for them to be on the sidewalk, but they needed to keep moving. They can't, you know, city ordinance says they can't be three or more abreast and not moving on the sidewalk. Um, so they were told numerous times by myself and others that they needed to keep moving. Well, as the uh, detectives began to uh, photograph, uh, the group of protesters remained on the sidewalk and uh, would not move until um, the police officers dealing with that group actually moved themselves and had to um, almost herd the group northly on the sidewalk. During this time, did you see the defendants part of that group? Yes, I did. How many times you, would you say you gave the uh, command to uh, move? I, I would say at least uh, two or three different times, just for myself personally. Did you offer an explanation as to why you wanted to move? Yes, they were told um, about the city ordinances. I heard uh, other officers tell them uh, about the city ordinance and the standing for your breast and the need to keep moving. Did you give any reference to the uh, ongoing photographs? Well, yes, it was explained to them because of the, the uh, detective taking the photographs that uh, we need to keep the area clear. Did they comply with the request? Um, they would only comply when we actually moved and made them keep moving. If we weren't physically moving, Your Honor, they would stop. <coughs> they would move when we had to move so to allow the detectives to keep photographing. <coughs> Eventually, where did this, where did this uh, group end up? Um, it was still on Chestnut Street between um, Merrimack and Manchester. They were at the, uh, what we call the North Parking Lot of the police station, just prior to the um, corner of Chestnut and Manchester. At this point, what happened? Again, the detectives had got to the point where they are almost done photographing fee that had been placed on the sidewalk in the building. Um, and I noticed that the group was still not moving, uh, despite repeated, um, repeated requests by me and other officers. And it was apparent to me that um, it didn't really um, matter to them what we were saying. They just wanted to get that point across to us. What you say, sir? Um, well, throughout my dealings with them during the day, um, they, they have a message that they're trying to <coughs> express, and they wanted to make that uh, apparent to us. Uh, Objection. Uh, I'd say trying to ascribe uh, characteristics from some individuals to others. Uh, I would ask that the witness uh, testimony be constrained to what he heard me say or uh, and not uh, reference actions of others. Very well, sir. Sergeant Patton, specifically, do you have any, do you have any conversation with the defendant regarding the request yes, move? Yes, many, many conversations. Okay. What was his personal reaction? Uh, he was um, pleasant with me, is that what you mean? He was pleasant with me. Um, however, again, it appears that um, they did not want to hear what we had to say. They just want to get their, their uh, I guess, message heard. From the first moment you asked, that. Where was the defendant in relation to the group? Uh, prior to him being arrested, he was in the front. He seemed to be the leader of the group, one of the leaders of the group. <laughs> Based on your, how long between your first request to move and finally it, I'll place the defendant upon, under arrest, would you say? Well, this, this event went on for uh, half hour to 45 minutes. So uh, from the beginning, uh, I would feel comfortable saying at least a half an hour from the beginning. Or, you know, again, many times that they were asked to keep moving. Can you describe the uh, volume you used to tell the people? Well, this conversation was on, loud enough for them to hear. We were within uh, five distance.
how would you address that yourself? In full police uniform. Thank you, Sergeant Patty. I have no further questions at this time. Defend me as a question for you. the witness and uh, ask him to read some text that he wrote in his report from the day. Again, uh, trying to ascribe group actions to me as an individual. 
and that it prejudices his actions. Yes. There is no response to be this. I don't know how to stand in the room. And so he shows bias. The defendant wants to ask the officer about any bias or any personal opinions he has regarding a particular group in case they inquire. His argument is bias, but this is merely just stating the name is not bias as far as I'm aware. Again, I think the fact that he used political group and in the oath that he swore to uphold, it says uh, very uh, succinctly that they, that they will take no uh, action against individuals based on, on group affiliation. I'm trying to recall something from, I think this is relevant because not only this witness but other witnesses reference this organization and it seems like uh, from the tone that is implied again, I would, we would hear from them firsthand uh, why they why they reference those groups. But I, I think it's uh, pretty critical to this incident. Well, I seem to recall although it, it, it was somewhat difficult for the court to divine what, what the argument was and some of what was raised, that there may be an issue of First Amendment. Yes. To the extent that there's an issue potentially raised as to First Amendment application, then the defendants, and, and that's why I was asking to look at this, to, to, to look back over some of what was submitted. To the extent that there's an issue of First Amendment freedom of speech being raised, then identify, then there's a potential that the information he induces by having the individual, by having the witness in this case go through this, uh, I guess is, um, might be relevant, but I don't have any law specifically on the application of the First Amendment. So, um, conditionally, I will allow the individual to ask about the issue, taking the, the court will take the matter under advisement at the end, and then the issue is how is the First Amendment implicated, and I'm going to expect parties to submit some law. Thank you, sir. All right, so um, if, you, if you wish to approach, you may. to search the contents of uh, devices seized on June 4th? Yes. And is that a supporting affidavit you filled out and submitted? Yes. Attached to it? Okay, could you um, start with the sentence while outside I spoke? While well, outside I spoke with some subjects and based on the conversations I had with them, I believe they may be associated with a political group known as the Free State Project. Okay. Could you um, expand on what led you to believe that and what your belief is on the nature of the Free State Project and how that may have influenced your actions that day. If you know, you could ask me specific questions. Sure. So, so what led you to believe these were members of the Free State Project in this group? Um, I guess just part of the uh, propaganda that was being handed out I thought was associated with that group. Could you be more specific, please? Uh, the type of propaganda of CDs and some business cards. Did you did you take it, a CD and watch it or listen to it at that time? Not, no, not at that time. So you were unaware of the contents, knew that literature was being distributed. Yes. So what is your how how then were you led to believe that these individuals some of, some of these individuals may have been associated with this group? Well, I know that um, a subject by the name of David Ridley was there, and he is associated with. Free State Project, so that's probably how it formed. Right, but is it um, is it normal 
for you to ascribe uh, characteristics from individuals present to others? Uh, I mean, would you say that individuals are responsible for their actions? Are individuals responsible for their actions? Yes. So is it, is it, uh, all right, if I can approach the witness and have him read the, his oath of office. Yeah, what is the relevance of the office? The relevance is that it says, uh, I will not act or permit personal feelings, prejudices, political beliefs, and if he had, without watching the content of the literature he said was being distributed, uh, yet still included a reference to the Free State Project, he obviously had some sort of prejudice towards the group. You know, I, I strongly disagree with that, just based on the evidence alone. There's no evidence of bias, it's just a bit of conclusion reached by the, by the officer at the time. That's tantamount to saying that because I saw people, some with gloves and bats, I assume they're a baseball team. Well, I think this is relevant because, again, the, uh, the first call when the, it was reported that individuals were present outside the police department within two minutes of the first dispatch call. The, uh, it was referenced that they may be affiliated with the Free State Project. Uh, other individuals who have submitted reports for this incident referenced the Free State Project. And I, I want to say, I want to uh, tease out the fact that, you know, individuals, as Mr. the witness just said, are responsible for their actions and it's uh, to ascribe actions or prejudices that may exist to other people present uh, violence their oath of office. The issue for the court is not whether or not the witness did something. The issue is whether or not the individual who is before the court had their free First Amendment rights compromised. So the focus of your question is not relevant to the issue. The focus is whether or not your First Amendment rights were damaged, not whether or not it was his intention or whether or not that's what he did. The issue is whether or not, as an objective fact, your First Amendment rights were compromised. So to the extent that, the, the, that your question is focusing itself upon the individual in terms of the individual's um, intention, the objection is sustained. I want you to understand, I'm not shutting you down from inquiring as to whether or not the conduct of the police violated your First Amendment rights. But that has to be the focus. The focus has to be your First Amendment rights. Not, this, this cannot transform itself. This, that's what we're about. We're about the issues and the allegations. So I'm sustaining the objection to the present question. Thank you, sir. Um, okay, would you move forward? Would you um, state then that your opinion that some individuals present may have been part of a group known as the Free State Project, did that uh, influence your actions towards them? No. So can I ask why then you included that in your report? Can I be supporting that today? Certainly. I was, I was hoping you would because it was part of um, my basis for the application for the search warrant was that, um, in my experience, members of this Free State Project often um, record their interactions with the police department. That was part of my supporting affidavit. There was more to that paragraph that you asked me to read. Okay, again, if we're going to go back to the recording issue, I, would, I think it's relevant then to bring up the fact that other cameras present were not seized. All right, let me maintain my objection on that ground. I still don't think it's appropriate, nor is it relevant. All right, sir. You did not raise, by way of motion, prior to the hearing, the issue of evidence not being taken, and there's a certain standard that has to be met for that that requires an evidentiary hearing. That, at this point, <coughs> is not something that the court is going to have inquiry into. Um, so I'm going to sustain the objection as to that issue. It could have been litigated, uh, certainly. But this is not the configuration to do that. There's not due process notice to the parties. And 
there is a specific standard that's set forth for that. Not having due process notice, you're here on the general merits of the case, so I'm sustaining the impact. I'm not going to let you bring that up because of the due process principles that are involved. Thanks. Okay, so you noted the um, numerous times in the report that day that uh, you believe the individual who's present might be recording, correct? Yes. Is recording public officials on duty illegal? No. To the best of your knowledge, you're aware of, have you ever arrested anybody for, for recording? I'm going to object. What is the relevance? Counsel? Oh, uh, excuse me. Sir, I apologize. The relevance is uh, that orders were given to, to turn over property. Um, safeguards such as receipts were not issued, despite other policies, once the property is obtained, uh, being in existence for policies, uh, internal managed district police department. The relevance is that uh, this uh, provides background information, which then uh, sh shows uh, why future, uh, why some present may have questioned uh, future orders given by the witness. Your Honor, this seems to be going back to the issue that we just, I guess, objected on, on not too long ago. Was that we're trying to challenge what evidence was taken and handling of evidence prior to a trial again. That it was not raised by motion, it could have been raised by motion any time prior to trial. The motion was filed. Uh, with regards to what other per persons may have uh, said or thought, I note that the defendant already objected before when the, that issue came up during the state's presentation of direct testimony with Sergeant Patty. When asked what Mr. Holdsworth, the defendant objected, saying that he couldn't speculate. He's now asking basically, saying this information is relevant to speculate as to what others may have been thinking at the time. Therefore, it's not relevant. It goes towards speculation. Well, I guess I would. Um fine-tune what I stated and said to myself, uh, I would apply what I stated to my own actions then. I would say, is it is it then, it, I would say it's reasonable for someone in my position, for me personally, to then um, question uh, future orders uh, issued by the witness. If you maintain my objective at this point, saying that you're asking, he's asking the Sergeant Tag to basically speculate to what's in his own mind. Well, this issue is disposed of by several matters that the United States, that the New Hampshire Supreme Court has decided. And the Supreme Court has, has said that the street is not the place for that to be decided. It is in a court of law as to whether or not the order is valid. So to the extent that what you are asking of this individual is that he had to justify his conduct to you in order to be able to deal with this situation is anathema to the rulings of the Supreme Court. So I'm going to sustain the objection. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'll move on to the, uh, the fourth uh, point on the fourth flag on the supporting affidavit. Uh, if you would read uh, where it starts with the intent to retrieve. Did you request from your colleague Timothy Craig to conduct a search of the devices? I can, I can 
can uh, approach the witness and provide this uh, supplemental incident investigation report. Yes. This one I'm going to object again to the relevant system. What may have happened during the investigation, if this has not been raised prior to trial today, it's been raised by motion. It seems like we're trying to get back to challenge the search warrant at this point. Looking at the search warrant. I just don't understand where, where, where you're going with this in terms of how that's relevant to what occurred on the day of June the, the 4th, sir. Uh, the relevancy is that uh, the search warrant the witness just stated was constrained to the incident itself, the content uh, that may have been captured at that time. I want to uh, document and show that content from that date was not captured from the Manchester Police Department and content outside of that incident was also was captured from the police department. So I want to show that uh, the, pol the search warrant uh, was not followed and that uh, policies, the search warrant was not followed. So I want to show that uh, it, caught, it raises questions of the witnesses' uh, testimonies accuracy. It does not. It's the issues that are before the court are the issues of what happened on June the 4th. Right, the right. issue of the search warrant is, an, is a matter that could have been litigated by filing an appropriate motion to suppress, but we're at trial, we've passed that, there's no due process notice, and therefore the inquiry exceeds what the parties are here on, the due process notice of the objection is sustained. and ask him to read a uh, paragraph from his incident investigation that reports. Yes, Your Honor, at this point I would just ask the uh, defendant to specify which there are several incident reports in this matter, which incident report he's talking about, <coughs> which is the paragraph. Sure, this Can you show him? So you noted earlier uh, that the group moved uh, to the north parking lot along Chestnut Street, correct? That's the area of, that's a part of the police station we, we, we refer to as the north lot. You're on a sidewalk in that location. Okay, is it, is it accurate to, then to know that the request to move off the crime scene uh, were, were, was met, that, that the group did move off the crime scene? Again, it's 
my memory that the only time we moved is in, when the police were actually moving to force you guys to move out of that area. But did I not move off the alleged crime scene? Had I not moved off the chalk? You had. So had I not then met the uh, order that had been issued to move off the crime scene? No, I don't believe you had. Oh, to move off the crime scene? Yes, you had. So I, I would motion the court to dismiss my disorderly charge that says I failed to move off the crime scene based on the witness's testimony. And we're not it's not the perfect time for any such motion and would object. Sir, one cannot raise that motion until all of the evidence is heard. Okay? You don't know what further I don't know what further evidence there may be. Well, uh, I mean, based on the witness's testimony, he usually gave an order to move off the crime scene, which he defined as chalk, and stated I moved off the chalk. And the disorderly I'm charged with says that, that I was on, that failed to move off the chalk. Well, I'm, I'm going to wait until I've heard all of the evidence, because that is the, the requirement uh, for any case. Okay. The motion to dismiss is the standard that the court is to employ is, well, some, it is taking all of the evidence and the rational and the reasonable evidence at the conclusion of the state's case. And the standard goes on to say, in the light of the is that no so true? Because I'm having a, I don't want to confuse our reporting. Sure. I can't have no one. Um, I'm sorry, I stopped midway through the standard. Uh, taking all the rational and reasonable uh, inferences from the evidence that has been induced, could any reasonable prior fact find that the elements occur? Necessarily, because that is the standard. You cannot make a motion to dismiss until all the evidence is in so that that argument can be made. Okay. If I could, I would like to. Um show a clip of a video that the state has already uh, submitted as part of the discovery um, to, to provide video evidence of the fact that I had in fact moved past the alleged crime scene. I don't know what the foundation I would object. The issue is foundation, so I guess you have to authenticate it. Uh, yeah, the authentication would come from uh, search warrant that witness applied for, the documentation that his colleague did in fact take this content off the devices and that it was provided to me by Greg Miller in Discovery. Well, well, sir, you have to ask questions and Discovery is different than, than trial. You have to ask questions and the digital to authenticate that it's the appropriate document under Rule 901. Okay, good. Could I show this clip and ask uh, the Proceed with questioning the witness about uh, whether, in fact, that was the incident from June 4th and whether, in fact, I had moved off the alleged crime scene. I'm not going to give you a ruling in advance. Okay. Can I ask a question? Let me just tell you the one conundrum the court has. And that is there is Part 2, Article 79 of the New Hampshire Constitution. You're asking me to tell you how to proceed, and I can't do that. Okay. May I, can I show a video clip uh, to the witness? Uh, that was captured on June 4th. Do you have an objection to him approaching the show? I have no objection to him approaching the show. All right. I can't see it from here, but I know, you know, I have a memory of it being from 
essentially the whole front of the police station now from Merrimack and uh, Chestnut to Manchester, not, not quite Manchester, Chestnut, but the, the north lot uh, of the police station. Okay, and would you say it was on the retaining wall? <coughs> um, both. Okay, so, okay, so I'm just going to play this and advance it a little bit. One moment, please. I would like to queue up another video. Again, we're in front of the uh, Manchester Police Department. Yes, sir. Okay, and that, would you agree that that individual with the tan shorts, black hat, and shirts, and myself? Yes, we do, yes. Okay, so I'm just going to play this. by that point, uh, no arrests had been initiated, correct? I had not been arrested at that point, correct? You had not been. No. Okay, and would you agree that I had moved past the alleged crime scene by that point? Well, this is, I think, just a different angle of the video you just showed. Um, and I testified to four. As you noticed, it appeared that the only time they were moving around is as the police were uh, almost you know, I, I hate to use the word hurting, but I can't think of any other um, action to describe. Right, but you would agree that I would pass the crime scene. Oh yeah, we, we can we can set up you know a crime scene as wide as we need. Okay. 
I was just just wanted to have that on the record. Gears a little bit. Uh, have you personally appeared in Manchester District Court for other uh, trials, uh, other charges stemming from the June 4th incident outside the Manchester Police Department? Yes. Uh, were you were you paid for, for your appearances? I'm going to check with the relevance. No. Uh, the relevance is the witness has an incentive to um, make arrests when he might not otherwise wouldn't, based on financial gain, personal financial gain. And I would like to submit into evidence a uh, document that shows how much he's getting paid for the thing. Counsel. You know, I know it's the office rolled in by statute witnesses are paid up here. Uh, it's, an it's a statutory obligation of the state to compensate witnesses for being here. I don't see how it's relevant whatsoever. I think it's extremely relevant. The incentive, if it, if, if obviously it's an uh, incentive for him to do so, if it were, if he were, if he had to pay to be here, for example, that would be a perverse incentive to make arrests. The fact that he has personal financial gain from being here, I think, is a strong uh, incentive to make arrests when he might not otherwise would have. Especially because the fact that his order to arrest me was made after the fact that he's already testified that I was off the alleged crime scene. Are you referring to the statutory witness fee that every person is entitled to as long as a witness? Uh, I'm referring to information provided to me from uh, Captain Bob Cumia of the Manchester Police Department. I'm not sure of uh, where he where he points to to uh, get these get these figures. Why, in fact, the witness is paid, but I know it does exist. I know he is he has in fact been paid, and I, I believe that uh, then shows that there is a clear financial personal gain to. Make arrests when otherwise it might not happen. It, you haven't quite answered my question. Every person who appears in court as a witness is entitled to the witness fee. Is that what you're referring to as the witness fee that any individual who is subpoenaed to appear is paid? Is paid? Um, I'm not sure where. It, the, the rationale is that the witness be paid uh, for his appearance. I just know that in fact it happens, and I wanted to um, submit an evidence as document to show that there is that he is the witness has been paid and is being paid today, and that is clearly a personal financial gain uh, to be here. And I would think that that would uh, could could skew judgment into when to make arrests or not make arrests. But if you're talking about the witness fee that every person who is a witness in a criminal case is entitled to have, then that has no track. If you're talking about something else, it would. Um, so to the, to the extent that, and again, I'm, I'm trying to give you a couple opportunities to tell me what it is, but it sounds like you're describing the fee that every human being who, is, who sees it, an event and is going to testify um, is, is entitled to. If that's what you're referring to, then I'm going to sustain the objection because it's no different for him than anybody else who oversees the event and testifies in court. I mean, I don't want to beat this to death, but I guess the last thing I would say for consideration is the fact that you know, I would assert that the charges levied against me are unfounded and the burden is unduly placed on me to try to prove my innocence and I've had to spend scarce resources that I do have to continue to be here while the witness on the stand who made the, who issued the order to have me arrested uh, has financial gain. I think that's a clear dis uh, disparity that's, that's present and I think it's a matter, and I would 
hope that that would be considered in, in this whole situation. You're right, civil and CIOs are all minimum short fee he's referring to or what compensation he's referring to. I don't. At this point, it's just some witness fee. You can't articulate which one it is. The separation between a witness fee and an overtime fee. At this point, I would suggest that it's inappropriate and it's not relevant. Okay. Can I ask the witness a few more directed, uh, specific oh, questions? Oh, if you want to withdraw the present question. Yeah, I'll, I'll withdraw that present question. Why don't you pose a, a new question? Okay. Uh, um, Mr. Patty, are you currently being paid to be here? Yes. And who's paying you? City of Manchester. Manchester Police Department? Well, the police department is a department within the city of Manchester. Right, so to be more specific, is it is the city of Manchester? Uh, obviously, the Manchester Police Department is part of the city of Manchester, but is the, will the check be cut? Will you be billed? Will the Manchester Police Department be billed for this time? Um, it's my understanding that uh, witness fees are paid from the state of New Hampshire. So there's some system they have set up through the state to pay the city. But is this, is this not being billed as overtime for your uh, role? You said uh, the past 16 years of the Manchester Police Department uh, employee, is this not going to be billed to that organization? That employee? At this point, I need to renew my objective. No. We're going with this. How does Foster roll in the charge of disorderly conduct? He's attempting to raise the issue of bias or prejudice. I'll let him answer the question because I'm not sure. I, I was confused by the offer of proof and the question that the defendant made. So I, I guess I need to listen to the answer to this question. The question seems different than the offer of proof made by the defendant. You can answer the question. I'm sorry, I'll need to get the question for you. Uh, my, the specific question is whether or not you will be submitting to your employer, the Manchester Police Department, um, time to be billed for your appearance today here. Yes, because I'm, I'm off duty today. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess I would just uh, change gears. You, you mentioned that you're, uh, you had many conversations with me on June 4th. Correct. Yeah, you and uh, group yeah. And you described them as pleasant, did you not? Yes. Uh, have you ever been in fear, great bodily harm of me? Of you? Correct. Now, let me let me just go back. That's not the way I described it. It was conversational. Yeah. That's the way I described it. Uh, yeah, you said conversational, tell them pleasant. But not enough to be heard. Okay, but you would say you've never been, I haven't been aggressive. You had no reason to fear great bodily harm or death for me, correct? No. Okay, I will rest. No further questions. Can we direct the examination? This was wrong. Sergeant Patty, go back to the uh, issue of the order being given. How many times did you request Mr. Harris specifically to move? Again, the, the um, statements were made uh, to the group of which Mr. Ayer was part of. And I, I personally made it in at least two to three uh, requests of that to move, and I heard other officers make similar requests. Okay. And I would object um, the fact that he addressed the group and not me as an individual. Uh, you know, there were times when I wasn't uh, probably within earshot of the witness. That's cross that we direct the examination, sir, to be able to do In the big <coughs> your personal knowledge, Mr. Ayer moved when verbally requested. No, not a simple verbal request. When did I am going to object at this point. I'm going to ask that the gallery members not interject in this matter. I have a gallery member here who's kind of trying to pass on legal advice. Nothing's oh. appropriate. All I, again, I don't need the noise off the roof. I don't need noise in the room because it's going to interfere with the report. So to the extent that there's going to be noise, it's going to be terminated one way or the other. I, I, I could hear noise in the background. It's going to interfere with the reporting. Please, folks, do not make noise. I don't want to have to have people. Go ahead, you can proceed. Thank you, sir. Sergeant Patty, when did Mr. Air move? Again, the um, verbal request alone didn't seem enough. It was when they were, I'll use the term, herded again out of the way. Uh, it was when 
officers had to um, be physically in motion for them to comply. Thank you, sir. No further questions. Do you redirect the examination, sir? Okay. Are we cross? Excuse me. Yeah. Okay, so you, you noted that you addressed a group uh, a number of times by that to move, correct? Yes. Uh, did you speak directly to me in those instances? Um, what do you mean by directly? Is it plausible that I was not within earshot, that I may have been far enough away that I did not hear what had been communicated? No, I don't believe so. That, that video shows that you were right there with that group. Okay. Um, you just noted the verbal request is not enough, correct? Correct. Is it then implied that physical uh, force was then used to move me off the crime scene? There was no physical force used. So it was then verbal. It was. No. I moved it on my own volition. I was not forced to move, correct? I was not physically taken off the crime scene, correct? By you or your colleagues. Well, how would you? Yes, okay, no. so did I to ask you a question? Was I physically moved off? Was I physically moved off, carried off, pushed off by you and your colleagues off the crime scene? Uh, I'll say that when you were arrested. Yes or no? Please. Well, I can't speak to that yes or no. Because when you were arrested, the police were not moving. And you and the members of your group were not moving. Correct, but had we not moved off the crime scene at that point? Oh, well, yes, we had. Okay, no further questions. Good question, John. Please step outside and do not step and discuss your testimony with any other witnesses. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Maybe excuse me, my next witness. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, please remain standing and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth? Whole truth and nothing but the truth in the face of Thomas Berger. Yes. Please be seated. Do you state your name and spell your last name for the record? Dan Lang, then the last name is spelled L A N G T O N. Mr. Lang, how are you employed? I'm a police sergeant with the city of Manchester, New Hampshire. How long have you been so employed? Over 22 years. Were you on duty on June 4th this year? Yes, I was. I want to direct your attention to a Late afternoon, early evening, at some point, did you assist uh, detectives in uh, taking photographs? Yes, I did. Can you describe the court what happened at that point? Um, during that date, there was a group of, uh, an organized group of people that were uh, writing on the side of the police station and the sidewalk. Um, Objection. Could I have the witness describe why he says it's an organized group? It seems like there's a bunch of individuals. Yeah, I think the organizer, or the organizer speaks for itself. I guess that becomes an issue of cross-examination as to the basis for the use of the um, adjective organized. <coughs> sort of, what happened with, with regard to this group? Uh, several people uh, in the group were writing on the side of the police station, the other side of the wall. The, uh, wall and the actual outside uh, wall of the station, and then there's a, um, an exterior wall on the sidewalk. Objection. Uh, relevance of, am I being accused of writing with chalk on the wall? So no, you are, but the defendants clearly raised an objection, raised an argument that it's not a lawful order. We would assert that this evidence goes towards lawful order. All right. You are challenging the lawfulness of the order, is that correct? Yes, it's a, it's a public building. There's no law, there's no damage being done. So to the extent that you, I apologize for that. To the extent that you are raising the issue of the lawfulness of the command, the state has a right to induce evidence as to the propriety of a legal argument that you will make at the end as to whether it is lawful or not, unlawful. Nonetheless, just as you have the right to deduce evidence with regard to things, they have the right as well. So I'm going to overrule the objection. So what happened next? 
Um, at that point, uh, there was some uh, issue as far as taking, getting photographic evidence of the uh, writings that were on the side of the police station. We we're going to have detectives uh, take photos of the, uh, the writings. What happened when we went out to the police station? We had to take these photographs. Uh, there were several people on the sidewalk and outside the building. They were shoulder to shoulder, uh, pretty much blocking the sidewalk access on the sidewalk. Did you say anything to those people? I advised the group that they had to move along and we were going to take photos and asked, I told them that, they were, that as a group they were blocking the sidewalk. Was the defendant part of this group? Uh, yes, he was. Did you recognize the defendant today? Yes, he's the gentleman in the black t-shirt. Or that's the right reflect the witness that identified the defendant. There's only one person sitting inside the bar besides yourself. Thanks. Did you specifically, how loud did you, sorry, how loud did you, uh, Make your request. Loud enough that pretty much everybody in the group said that they weren't a group, that they were pretty much individuals in response to so several people within the group. What happened next, sir? I told them that as a collective group of people that were blocking the sidewalk, they needed to move. They needed to move. At that point, uh, officers started to line side by side, started walking the parties northerly um, up Chestnut Street on the sidewalk, so detectives could take photos. At that point. I went out onto the street because of some of the people were strolling over onto the street to make sure cars uh, didn't hit them. When you first asked them to move, did anyone comply with your request? No, we did not. One subject did leave um, because I asked him to, but he said he was, he was complying under uh, duress or something like that. Did the defendant comply with your request to move? He stayed on the side of the Okay. At what point did he move? Um, as officers started to walk over. You said that, can you describe how they were walking? Uh, they were facing the officers and they were walking backwards. I'm sorry, can you describe how the officers were walking? They were, what the they officers, were, how were they walking on the sidewalk? They were walking the right, uh, across the side, I described it as walking the rest. Cool. Thank you, Sergeant. I have no further questions for you at this time. the witness asking to read part of the uh, report, uh, the report that he submitted for this incident, I can show. Okay. Uh, we continued normally up Chestnut Street to Tecla Valley, took photos. Uh, we were met with some resistance by a large group of subjects. The group was advised uh, to move along uh, so we could take photos of the graffiti on the building. The group started to move the subject. The crew refused to take him into custody. Detective LaValle finished taking his photos, and the officers were uh, posted in front of the building. As I assisted in the book booking process of the subject, were taken into custody. Okay, you, you know that the group was advised to move along, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, in what way does being advised differ from being ordered? I told everybody they had to move along, sir. I told them that what our purpose was and what we were doing. Okay, you noted that the subjects who refused were taken into custody, correct? Yes, sir. Uh, did you any, hear anybody uh, communicate that they refused your order? Did they verbally communicate? I, I, I didn't want anybody to take anybody into custody, sir. Okay. Did you hear anybody verbally refuse your the or the advisement to move along? People did not move, no, sir. But, until the officers started to move them along. But nobody verbally refused, correct? I don't know, I don't recall, sir. Okay, and this, what was the stated purpose of asking those in the group uh, to move along? So we could take photos of the uh, graffiti of the writings alongside the building. And those photos could not be taken uh, because some of those individuals were on the alleged crime scene? Is that correct? Yes, sir. So the issue was that the, the crime scene was being covered by these individuals, including the, myself. The, the sidewalk was being covered because it was being blocked so we couldn't take the photos. So when the arrests were, when the order to arrest was made by Sergeant Patty, uh, would you agree that, it, that individuals, including myself, had moved off that crime scene at that time? I don't know at what point he ordered me to be arrested, sir. Okay, would you agree that 
when I was arrested, I was not on the alleged crime scene. I believe you were arrested, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I, I agree with that, I guess. Okay. Um, so is it reasonable then for me, once the advisement to move off the crime scene had been met, that I was perfectly fine where I was? I don't know why I decided to you up or you could be taken into custody, so I, so I, I really can't answer that question. No further questions. You may step down. Please do not discuss your testimony with any other witness until this matter is concluded. Counsel? Excuse me, my last witness. Yes, sir. My name? Thanks. Take those off to Thomas Gonzalez. <laughs> Sir, please remain seated and raise your right hand. You solemnly swore or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth on the page of penalty burger. I do. Please be seated. Please state your name and play the last name for the record. Thomas Gonzalez. C-O-N-Z-A-L-E-S. Mr. Gonzalez, how are you employed? I'm a police officer with Manchester Police Department. How long have you been so employed? About 16 years. Were you on duty on June 4th of this year? I was. Uh, what was your assignment on that day? I was assigned uh, to the wagon, the transport wagon, the transport business. At around uh, 6 p.m., where were you dispatched to, sir? I was uh, dispatched to the police department in reference uh, to a group of protesters that were demonstrating out in front of the police department. When you arrived, what did you observe? It was a group between 15 to 30 individuals outside the front of the PD. What were they doing at that time, sir? Uh, well, when I got there, there was, uh, there was writing all over. I didn't actually see who wrote, but uh, there was some writing in chalk over the front of the building, across the retaining wall, and on the sidewalk. This group of individuals, what were they doing? Uh, they, were, uh, well, they were confront us, uh, ask us different questions about our job. Um, they were uh, also uh, questioning about uh, people that arrested and violating their rights. What happened next, officer uh, Gonzalez? At that point, uh, due to the fact that the, uh, some of the writings were on the building and on the retaining wall, and the fact that the group was blocking the sidewalk, covering the sidewalk. Um, we were told by um, Sergeant Bucci, Sergeant Patty, and Sergeant Plankton uh, to remove the subjects from the sidewalk in front of the PD. Where do you, did you personally hear any verbal orders given at that time? Yes, um, several officers, including Sergeant Bucci, Sergeant Plankton, Sergeant Patty, uh, told the demonstrators uh, that they had to remove themselves from the sidewalk they had to continue to move uh, in violation of the state statute. Um, they didn't move, they'd be arrested. Did you personally heard this? I did. And how far were you from uh, Sergeant Patty, Sergeant Mucci, Sergeant Langdon? I was probably, at, in the beginning, probably around five to 10 feet. What happened next, Officer Gonzalez? Uh, we formed a line, several officers formed a line um, right on the sidewalk, which would be the east sidewalk in front of the police department at Merrimack Street. Um, and we told the group they had to continue moving Get, remove themselves from the sidewalk and continue moving if they're going to be on the sidewalk. Did they comply with your verbal request to move? Uh, when we first gave orders to move, they didn't. Once we started moving towards them, uh, they would move as we moved. Uh, when we stopped moving, the group would then stop and continue to question us. We continued giving verbal orders at the time? We continued uh, up the sidewalk as we moved towards them, telling them to move. They continued to move north up the sidewalk. Uh, eventually, we moved up almost to Manchester Street, uh, beyond the graffiti area, 
And at that point, um, we continued to tell them that they had to move from the sidewalk, they had to continue to move. Uh, however, they stood there and continued to question us. Based upon this behavior, did you arrest anyone? At, right about that time, Sergeant Patty uh, gave the order, said uh, they can be arrested. And then I walked up to the defendant and uh, placed them under arrest for disability conduct. Were you able to identify the defendant at that point? Yes, he was uh, identified as Peter Erie. Okay. You recognize Mr. Erie here in the court for that? Yes, he said the defendant's table was in the black shirt. Or as the record reflected, the witness identified the defendant. Once again, the record looks like there's only one other human being inside the bar. Yes. Officer Gonzalez, where was Mr. Eric during your involvement in the request to move? He was on the sidewalk. From the moment you first started this? I mean, I'm not sure there was a large group. Uh, eventually, he was in front of me, standing with the group on the sidewalk up towards Manchester Street. While well, I was in front of you, did you give him any verbal commands? I told him that he had to move, yes. And did he comply with your verbal request? He did not. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. I have no further questions for you at this time. Sir?
protesting our jobs, the police job, what I did for work, whether I agreed, um, whether I was violating your rights. That's basically what I got from our conversation. During our conversations at any time reference the uh, it, it incident that happened on March 3rd, 2010, outside the strange room that involved um, four of your colleagues that were off duty? I don't recall that conversation. Okay, uh, could I submit to evidence uh, this uh, printout of a newspaper story that uh, referenced uh, the issue why we, I was in fact out there that day and I supplied it to the uh, Greg Moeller, part of my discovery, but I think it speaks to um, it, it demonstrates why I was there and um, why the actions taken by individuals with the Manchester Police Department that day I felt were uh, demonstrative of uh, this pattern of um, rights violations. Yes, there are, okay. there is your honor. Officer Law said he wasn't sure, so except for his wife is recalling a conversation regarding I guess, what the article is about. As from that, there's no testimony like that being relevant. This one I would object. Well, it's not an issue of relevance, it's a version issue of authentication. If he can't authenticate that, that is what is there, then that's problematic. So the objection at this point is sustained. Thank you, sir. Uh, how long have you been employed with Manchester Police Department? Um, just over 16 years. Okay, in the 16 years, <coughs> Are you aware of a colleague ever doing anything uh, and not for which you would arrest somebody without a badge for? Yeah, I guess I'm not what is the relevance? I'm not even sure what the question would be is. The relevance speaks to why I was present that day, the, the double standards that I believe uh, have existed, and my uh, hope that uh, that can be mitigated going forward. I understand the pending question is, is Officer Gonzalez unaware of anyone ever being arrested for a crime that someone else wasn't arrested for? That's, that's the pending question. That's my understanding of what the pending question was. I don't know how that's relevant. I mean, we'd be talking about... No, to, to specify, if I could, it's not anybody. It's a colleague at the Manchester Police Department. I want to show the clear double standards that I think exist for those who work for this organization um, versus somebody who does not. And how that was manifest that day in uh, the attempt to chill uh, my free speech and, and one seeking accountability and to bring those injustices to light. I guess we're asking for personnel matters. Uh, that's controlled by statute. Um, if we're, again, I don't know how it's relevant, if we're asking if Austin's also aware of some time where someone's been arrested for something that a member of the Manchester Police Department may or may not have been arrested. Rest it for, we're asking for a side of the police department. Just in the, during the question, I don't understand exactly what's being asked. I don't know how it's relevant, how it's currently worked. Right. The issue before the court is whether or not on June the 4th of 2011, whether or not there was a violation of the disorderly conduct uh, section of the criminal code. The interposed defense potentially here is one of First Amendment expression. The issue then becomes whether or not an answer to the question as to whether or not someone might have avoided apprehension based upon their status is linked directly to the First Amendment rights in terms of the arrest. There is no link as to that based upon that question. Therefore, it cannot meet the 401 relevance standard under the rules of evidence, so the objection is sustained. Thank you, sir.
Yeah. Unobjective, the defendant's been reading a portion of the uh, exhibit's already been submitted to court for review at any time. He's going to reference it and say, we're seeing paragraph two of it. So, I'm going to reference paragraph two of the witness's report uh, in which he states that slowly the group moved north of the sidewalk until they were beyond the graffiti. And then another sentence later says, at this point, Sergeant Patty told us to place the group under arrest. So, I would, I guess, ask the witness, are, is this uh, report accurate that the group, including myself, uh, had moved past the crime, the alleged crime scene in the graffiti? Yes, you did. You moved slowly, moving only when we moved towards you. So, and it was communicated to me that I needed to move off the, the chalk for photographs to be taken. We communicated to the group that they had to continue moving from the sidewalk um, because they were encumbering and impeding traffic on the sidewalk. Um, you did move out of the area that we needed to photograph, however, did not move from the sidewalk and continue moving. You would continue to impede traffic on the sidewalk even in the location where you eventually were arrested. Was the rationale cited for encouraging myself to move north up Chestnut Street? The fact that I was standing on the crime scene that needed to be photographed as evidence. There were two orders. You had to move out of the area that needed to be photographed, and you had to continue moving on the sidewalk for nine feet um, pedestrian traffic. Okay, so I guess per the first, would you agree that I had moved off the alleged crime scene? before the time that Sergeant Patty issued the order to uh, be placed on the arrest? There were several times that the group did not move when we were ordered to move, and only moved when we moved towards you. Um, right, but so the I discretion that we used at that point, uh, because the group continued to move. But when I, had, when I was arrested, I was past the alleged crime scene, correct? That is correct. For the second point of blocking the sidewalk, how many people do you recall were arrested at that point when I was arrested? I don't, I don't know. Okay. Um, <coughs> if I could, uh, I'd like to, I guess, well, if, I guess if we reference other police reports that have been submitted, it would, it would disclose that myself and two other individuals, Garrity and, and Charles, Johnson's <coughs> last name were arrested at that time, and you indicated that there was a, a large group. So my question then is, uh, why the unequal application of this supposed order? Uh, why three of us and not the entire group? There were several several officers that were there. The officers that were there grabbed the certain people, placed them under arrest. The other remaining people in the group uh, continued walking away from us. Uh, there weren't enough officers to continue after them. And that's why several of the group got away and were not apprehended. Uh, would you say that after my, I was arrested and other uh, individuals were arrested, that some that had been present at that scene uh, then moved into the lobby and awaited our release? I'm, I'm not sure at that point I was, I was uh, with you. I don't know. Um, were you ever in fear? Well, how would you describe the uh, demeanor of our conversations throughout the day? Or did, did you and I interact prior to my arrest? I do with the relevance of what happened prior to the arrest. On the one prior we're talking about, you know, it's, it's in Barrett. Okay, yes, sir. How would you? Um, I would hope that it would um, show that I was not uh, an aggressive person deserving of being uh, arrested. But that's not the element of the offense, is it? 
Okay, so if it's not an element, then he can't pass the test for relevance under Rule 401. Okay, I would. I guess I would ask. Uh, you know that. So the first point of being past the chalk has been addressed. The second point of being in a group, which you said impeded movement on the sidewalk, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, if I could, I'd like to uh, reference a photograph that um, one of the witnesses' colleagues, Joseph Lucci, submitted um, that, that the state provided me in discovery. That's an authentic photo. I won't check this again. On the time when this was taken, what part of things that we're talking about? If I, if I could, I could find the, the uh, number that's associated with this in the individual who took this pic picture's report and it's also noted on top of this photograph and a description of the photograph is indicated in the report as well to verify that this is a fact. Sir, he, he seems to be saying that under this being a trial that it has to come in through a witness. this through a witness, unlike the police report, which he agreed to, he's objecting. And okay. what he's doing is he's objecting based upon the authentication rules. The photographs have to be authenticated. So because he is objecting on a valid ground um, and is not, not using the discretion he had, as he did earlier, to allow the paper to be marked as an exhibit under the rules, I have a rules of evidence, I have, the, I have the obligation to sustain the objection. Okay, would you, uh, would you claim, would you acknowledge uh, the fact that when you and your colleagues walk mortally along Chestnut and advise the group, including myself, to continue moving, that that then caused us, caused me and the, my other individuals that were present to, um, you know, we, it removed the possibility of us being spread out along Chestnut Street, correct? In fact, we, we were not allowed to be southern, southerly of, of your uh, location, correct? So, is it then accurate to uh, infer that uh, we were then being bunched up as we walked north? You were bunched up as a group from the very beginning, and as we continue moving on, some of the folks continue walking on the sidewalk, some across the street. However, uh, there was a, 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 a the group that you were with remained right on the sidewalk. Would you say that prior to my arrest, uh, myself, I was not always uh, standing with a large group of people at times. I was conversing one-on-one -on -one with yourself and other individuals? That's correct, yes. Uh, okay, that's all. No further questions. Just very briefly on the Yeah. Austin Gonzalez, uh, Council just said. I just asked you uh, regarding prior conversations that you had with one on one. When did those occur? Uh, probably with half an hour prior to removing them. Um, we, I was monitoring the group about an hour prior to being sent. So, so in this prior contact, those conversations occurred? Yes. Thank you, sir. No further questions for you. Did that cause you any questions? Um, yeah, how would you? How would you describe the demeanor of our conversations? There were just conversations then. Your demeanor was polite. So you never felt like I was hostile or aggressive or Not at all. never feared great bodily harm or death? Not at all. Did you, in fact, um, initiate another conversation when I was being processed? Sure, at this point, I'm going to object this outside the scope of redirect. That question would be beyond the limited scope of his redirect examination. Yes, is an objection. Further questions? I think for the honor. Would you please step down? Would you please not discuss your testimony with any other witness? 
Because the statute in this case is drawn from the model penal code, which has been around for close to 50 years, there certainly is not going to be an issue of first impression with regard to that component. And I imagine that there's probably some First Amendment law out there.
and they bear the burden of proof with regard to whether or not there is law that is violated by that particular issue. Because if this were a jury trial, this would have been submitted in advance as a jury instruction. It's not a jury trial, so the parties have the privilege of additional time having heard the evidence come in. Do you understand that? Okay. Then there's nothing more I can accomplish uh, with regard to, to this case. Bailing conditions continue. Please get them in and close a business on November the 10th. It's not in a, I, I cannot miss it. Thank you very much. Can you drive? <laughs>